everyone, this is Caleb Simpson, and you are watching my 100% walkthrough for The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for Nintendo Wii. Welcome to the fifth dungeon of the game, the Sand Ship. Now as soon as you enter, you'll see that the whole area is in the present, so everything's all like dilapidated and stuff. You want to run over to the far left where there is a set of doors. So go ahead and enter, and our only objective at this point is to go down the stairs and continue on to the far right. Now before you get too much further, I do want to point out that there is some nearby blessed butterflies, and this marks the location of a goddess wall. There's actually two different goddess walls in this dungeon, and you can use both of them, but I would recommend that you kind of wait, because this one's easy to get to. It's right like towards the beginning of the dungeon, and it's like close to the boss room as well, so we can actually use it to get some berries before we begin the boss battle. So go ahead and use that if you want to, but I'd recommend you wait until you're getting ready to fight the boss before you activate that. So continuing onwards, on the right side there's a hallway with a doorway. You want to go there, and you can defeat the, the thunder keys if you want. It doesn't really matter too much. You can actually just run past them. In the next room there is a single electrospume in the sand here. You want to go ahead and blow it up with a bomb so you can get past, and then run across the sand. This next hallway doesn't have anything of interest for now, so just continue on down the stairs and through the next door. In this next room, there's also a whole bunch of Araka, but you can just run right past them. You don't actually have to fight these guys at all. Although one comment about that is that if you're wearing treasure metal especially, um, they have a chance to drop yellow ch or uh, chew jelly. Now I'm not sure if defeating Araka has a higher chance, or, like has the same percent chance to give you that as like yellow choo choos do, for example. Um, but because there's so many of them, it might be smart to kill them if you're trying to get yellow. If you're trying to get chew jellies. Blech. So if you want chew jellies, it might be smart to actually defeat all those Araka for that reason. Up ahead, there's also the boss door. If you get too close to it, then Fi will give you her little description of, oh no, the boss door requires a boss key, like she says in every single dungeon. It's kind of a tedious dialogue. But anyways, if you get too close, she'll say that. And onward, there's some more thunder keys. Again, there's not really a reason to defeat them. You can just run straight through the door. There's no reason to kill them, unless you want to hopefully get some monster claws, I guess. In this next room, we have another one of those doors like we had in the Ancient Cistern where you have to strike them in a particular order. And one of the clues we have is that if you look off to either side of the door, there is one of those wheels like you'd use to steer a boat uh, that has the spokes on it. I guess is what you call that, the different pieces of wood that are sticking out. Um, and you'll notice that the wheels that are on the either side of the door has red on the upper side of the wheel. Now this is to indicate that red is up. So if you look at all these spokes on the, or you look at all these wheels on the ground, they have a certain number of spokes, certain number of wood things sticking off it and these are red and they're colored. So the number of red spokes indicates which order you do them in. So if you look at these, you'll see this one that I'm uncovering right now has three spokes on it and that, that is red and that side is also up. So if you look at all these from the correct perspective, this will tell you the correct order and which direction to do them in. So this one you point up so that red is pointing up. There's only one spoke on this one and the direction that it shows is down. So the first one is down. First direction is down. Then you go into the next room, you can see the other ones. Second one over here is up, and then the third one right next to it is down, and then finally the fourth one, which is over here, is to the right. So yeah, a little bit kind of obscure of a puzzle, but that's the solution, is uh, down, up, down, right, is the correct order to strike the door. Now with these doors, if you happen to hit them too many times, or like you hit them in the wrong direction or whatever, then you just hit it until it recenters. It makes a particular sound when it recenters it and goes back to the top again. Once you've hit it correctly, the mechanism will break, and this will unlock the door, allowing us to proceed. Inside, you will then get a small key, which allows you to proceed with a locked door that's on another floor. That's all we came here to do, so you want to return all the way up the stairs and across through all the hallways and stuff until you get back to that first room that we entered when we first entered the dungeon, and there is a locked door there. Now this actually does lead to a mini boss, so I recommend that you sit down on the nearby stool to regenerate your health, and then you want to save at the bird statue before you continue. I would also recommend that you make sure that your sword is very calibrated. And the last thing to comment on is that it's very... It, a shield is very nice for this battle. So if you don't have a shield, then I would recommend you go get one or whatever. But um, that could be something that could help you a lot, because this battle can be kind of tricky without one. As soon as the battle with Skurvo begins, you want to quickly dash forward and then slash your Wiimote to do a running jab, and this will actually almost always get through his defenses. Not always, but usually it's pretty good. Now basically the best thing to do with this guy actually is just stabs. You can stab over and over again, and even like while holding Z, hop forward with A. You can either, the two things you can do at that point, you can either stab in midair, so you'll do an upward strike that way, or you can wait until you land and then stab. But stabs are the way to go for this guy. 
if he looks like he's about to attack, he's usually actually vulnerable in the middle of that, so you just get really aggressive and just push really hard. You can actually attack him while he's still vulnerable. Otherwise, you can also shield bash, and that's another way of dealing with this. Now, do know that some of his attacks are electrified. If you do not have a shield that is resistant to that, then this will cause problems. Every time that he continues on to the next phase, then he'll start running at you again from the opposite side. You want to run at him and then use a jump attack as your or dashing run attack, and that will get through his defenses almost every time. I think the only time that the direction matters is when he's like standing up right like this. He'll hold out his uh, sword off to one side, and then he can actually defend from that side. And so that's a problem. But other than that, I don't actually think that there's any parts of this battle where the direction matters. You can kind of just flail around like crazy. Um, if he is defending from one particular direct direction, then just be ready to attack from the opposite side. But it's pretty easy to do, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Honestly, the big thing to know with this guy is either be really aggressive or really defensive, basically. So you either use shield bashes or just attack him really aggressively, because right after he attack or when he's charging up his attack animation, he's vulnerable. So if you just attack him very quickly, or you attack, you wait and just counterattack. Those are the two good ways to deal with it. Oh yeah, the final B button item, the bow. Now this thing's pretty cool. It is actually kind of nice. Like in Twilight Princess, you got once you got the bow, you pretty much didn't need the slingshot every, anymore. <laughs> you use a slingshot just for like additional bullets, basically, for if you wanted to conserve your arrows, basically. But there, otherwise, there wasn't really a reason to use the slingshot anymore. It made it completely obsolete. So one thing I like about this game is that the slingshot is still useful, uh, in particular against certain enemies. Um, if, as long as you don't have, yeah, if you have too many arrows, then still the bow is better, I suppose, because it kills enemies rather than stuns them. But there's a lot of situations where the slingshot will just work. Um, so it's actually pretty powerful. Also, the bow is a little more geared towards really far range. You can't really use it super effective up close. So the slingshot is definitely better for that. But anyway, I just like that, that the slingshot is still useful. So if I will also point out that there are various targets on the boat that we can interact with with our bow. So we're gonna be doing that here in a little bit. Now up ahead, Fi actually starts yelling at my battery life. And this is actually kind of a, a really common reoccurring thing in Skyward Sword, so a lot of players experience it. In fact, Fi talks about it so much that it's kind of become a meme online where people talk about it. Oh, Fi, your batteries are low, your batteries are low, your batteries are low, because she will not shut up about it. Super annoying. Um, so anyways, but I do think it's a little bit ridiculous because she honestly starts talking about it, like seriously, I think at like 50% battery life. It shows it as one little sliver on your screen. I think that's wrong. I honestly think I get, could get another five hours out of this set of batteries. But I am going to change it for the walkthrough just to be, so I don't have this obnoxious flashing on the screen and have her constantly interrupting me. Alright, at this point I think the bow is actually a little bit difficult to describe, so I actually want to show how to use it um, a little more in depth than I have for previous items. So, enjoy this little video. This is something I recorded in one of my previous play sessions. All right, bow tutorial time. So I wanted to do a quick, uh, I want to show this because it's like, it's difficult to explain. It's easier to show. So I turned on my webcam for this real quick. So helicopter in the background. I don't know how obnoxious that is. Anyways, um, so how you use this is with, as with any B button item is you press B and it'll start using it. So whatever direction you're pointing, even if it's really wonky, now all of a sudden like this is my center point and it's like, what the heck is going on? And so you send it back at the screen and it freaks out and you press down on the D-pad to center it. And like. And I'm sure a lot of you are like, okay, what's the point? And the reason I pointed out is because if you're like, say you have it sitting in your lap and you're like down in a position like this kind of, I mean, obviously I'm holding my arm up so you can actually see it on the webcam, but uh, you press B and you're like, great. And then you start moving back to the center and it's like, oh, what is going on? So you press down on the D-pad and that's how you fix that. That's why I pointed that out. That was an extreme example the first time. So you use the bow, whatever position you start out with, that will automatically calibrate that to your center defaultly, but you can always recenter it with down on the D-pad, which is great. So you can use the bow a variety of different ways, and that actually changes the way you aim, and I will describe that here in a little bit. Real quick, let's talk about arrows. So there's two different ways to shoot arrows. You shoot defaultly, your arrows are fairly inaccurate, like you just, I'm gonna tap over in the middle of this door. You'll notice that it's like, they swing way wide. Going all over the place. You can charge it a little bit, and your bows are your arrows are pretty darn accurate. 
which is great for things like hitting switches and stuff like that. So for puzzles and stuff, that's fine. It doesn't really matter too much. But if you're going to fight enemies, just so you know, once it's fully charged, it is more accurate. The arrow like spins and it shoots very accurately and it doesn't fall off. The fall off range isn't as bad. It's, it goes further before it starts doing that. Uh, but more importantly, it does more damage. So if you're fighting, you know, say you're fighting blue Bokoblins and they have blue Bokoblin archers or whatever, and you want to take them out. If you use just regular arrows that aren't fully charged, it doesn't work very well. So that's, that's the reasoning for why you want to fully charge it. And the difference between the regular bow and the upgraded bow, so right now I have the regular one, and then it goes to the iron bow and then the sacred bow, I think it is. Um, so the reason for doing that is that the damage gets greater each time. It also charges with A faster. Now that's all great, but there's actually two different ways to shoot the bow. You can use the A button at the bottom of the screen like it shows, but also on the far left you can also use C. How that works is you hold C and then you flick the button. I think I've, I'm almost, I'm, I think I'm just like shaking my hand just a little bit, or I'm moving a little bit, but it's like, keeps charging on its own. Eh. Stop. Okay. Yeah, it's like doing it all on its own. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I was trying to show how, how you have to make it do it. Anyways, you, you can flick it whatever direction you want. You need, it, takes, it requires a little bit of motion, so what they're intending you to do is like flick back like that or something. So you're like, you got it. And then you're like, flick back. Meow. So the, your, the idea is you're getting your whole body into it and you're using it like a real bow. Now, this motion feels, it feels kind of weird. You know, it's, it's, it's all right. But what they're intending you to do is actually to do more like this. Now that's okay, but just so you know, when you start doing that, what happens is the controls change. So now this motion, just tilting like this, r like radically changes your left and right uh, movement. So just something to be aware of, that if you're gonna use it in this position, this I generally think this is more accurate because you're using it more like a pointer. The gyroscope isn't as, does, like doesn't do anything when you tilt like this, but when you're upright, tilting like that makes it turn. And I think it's way more, it's just super, super sensitive. Like you're doing this and it's like not too bad, but you do this and it's like, it just feels it feels more extreme to me. So just be aware of that. If you want to use the bow upright, it is a little bit more awkward, I think. However, um, advantage of that, though, is if you use your entire arm like they're intending you to do and you're putting your whole body into it, check this out. This is kind of cool, though. If you're not tilting like this, but rather you're using your, your shoulder as a fulcrum point where that's like your pivot point where you're rotating, it doesn't actually, like, it's a little more accurate. Like, you can, it's, it's a little bit easier to snipe with. And because you're using C, is what they're intending you to do, um, it doesn't make your right arm shake as much. So you might want to play with it like you just aim like this and you figure out which, like... So for me it looks like flicking to the left is causing the least... It's causing the least jerkiness, for example. So you can decide what you want to do. But you're like, alright. Boom. And as always, though, too, just like using A, you can totally use it and then decide, like, you just release it when you're ready to go. But if you cancel and you don't want to do it, you just press B to stop using it. So anyways, those are the two different ways to use it. You can just either use it in a default position. You can use A or C. When it's, say it's in your lap, you just kind of do a quick flick of the C. Flick of the C, it's a weird phrase. Um, and that works. Or you can hold down with A. Or you can use it upright and you can use A or use C. And you put your whole body into it and that's the other way to do it. And I think this is really cool. Check this out. The way they designed it was actually pretty intentional with their item wheel. Check this out. So you press B. Whatever you're doing, you're like, hey, B button with, with the bow. Man, straight up. So so I think it's cool because you're like, all right, I'm doing stuff. I'm, I'm fighting things. And then you're like, ninja. And I just think that's sweet. Like, they, they obviously designed it that way, and I just think that's really cool. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's how you use the bow. I just find that all very fascinating. It makes me feel like the fact that the bow has multiple forms of, or multiple interfaces for how you can control with it, makes me think that perhaps they started out with the bow originally and maybe added the slingshot later. So maybe originally all of the ranged of items you were supposed to hold the Wiimote up and then they changed it down the road just to consolidate or make, make all the items feel the same so they all use the A button. So maybe the bow didn't even really use the A button originally. Anyway, that's my theory. Like maybe playtesters got confused by it or whatever. So they, they decided to change it and make it a little more um, consistent, I guess. But anyways, once you get back to the deck of the boat, you want to go ahead and shoot the arrow orb that's here on the middle mast. And this will reveal a time shift stone up above. So you want to stand over near this ladder and then you can shoot the time shift stone from here. You'll notice that a lot of these ladders are actually covered with spikes. So we can't get through them when we're in the present. So shoot the time shift stone. What this will do is it takes the entire ship to the past. 
this of course causes a bunch of bad things to happen. You know in video games, whenever you see something shiny, it's either really good or really bad. <laughs> Let's use this time shift stone. This will be fine. What could go wrong? <laughs> so what will happen is a bunch of vocal blends will then appear, and one of them on top of the mast will actually rotate a lock that causes the time shift stone to be blocked off so we can't return the ship to the pe present for now, but also blocks a nearby doorway so we can't even leave until we deal with this. The vocal blends here on deck don't matter, but you can climb up the nearby ladder now that there's no longer those spikes there in the way. And up there we actually have a vocal blend archer. Now, I think we've fought vocal blend archers a couple times so far, but now that we have the bow, they will finally drop arrows. And in fact, some of these guys, this one in particular, will always drop a, drop a stack of five. Something you can do actually is you can just weave back and forth instead of get arrows from them because it'll shoot the arrows into the deck. Uh, but something to know about some of these guys is they often have monster horns, and I do recommend that you go ahead and just grab a monster horn from them using the whip every time, and then that way you'll just steadily stock up on them. It's not like you don't have to go super far out of your way to get monster horns, but if you just get them whenever you see one, then you'll probably do pretty good. Now, before you continue onwards, we're going to climb the mast. And in order to do so, though, you can fight the Bokoblins up there, otherwise you can snipe them all from below using the bow. So if you want to, you can actually snipe all of them, and you can break the nearby bar barrels or go in a door and come back out again to make that Bokoblin archer reappear, so you can continually kill it to get a stack of five arrows. Either way, whatever you decide, you want to go ahead and climb the mast and then steadily work your way to the right, where there is a pulley over here. Now, unfortunately, we do not have access to it. The pulley itself is over on the other side, so you want to use the, or zip line, whatever you want to call this, and you want to go ahead and shoot the arrow orb on the other side. This will cause the pulley to come down to you, so you can grab it and then take it back up. Now, luckily, these ones are mechanical or whatever. They're not a one-way, or a mechanical, whatever. They're, they're powered, is what I'm trying to say. So they don't just, like, slide and follow gravity like the old ones were that we were using back in Super Street. These Pokemon archers up here, I think most of them have, most of them or all of them have monster horns, so I like to grab them all just because I can collect some treasure as we're doing this. And I think all these guys pretty much, you can't really hit them without the, uh, without them falling down, so you can't get the, the arrows that they drop behind. Um, now these vocal blends that are on the paths can be a little bit awkward to deal with, and uh, one fun thing to do, which I did not do in this particular recording, but you could try actually rolling bombs towards them, because there's nowhere they can run, so they just kind of like, and then run backwards, and then the bombs finally explode on them, so you can keep rolling bombs towards them until they're like at the end next to this pulley thing, and then they'll finally just blow up, and it's funny. But yeah, if you're gonna shoot vocal blends from below, in particular the ones that you really want to hit are the ones that are masked, um, so the ones that have like a... Uh, yeah, like the, the leathery helmet thing, whatever. Those are the ones you want the hood, I guess is the right phrase. So you want to smack all the ones with the hoods from below, and then that will take care of the archers. So you don't have to worry about them when you're going across these masts. So once you get to the very top, you want to go ahead and rotate the, I guess it's the power node, I guess. It's what it was in Laneru anyways. So go ahead and stab that thing with your sword, rotate it up, and then press it back in again. And uh, this will unveil the time shift stone so we can access it again. This allows us to switch the ship back and forth between the past and the present, which allows us to access different areas. Skipper will call out to you from below and say you should head to the brig to go meet up with his compadres. Unfortunately, so that we can bail out the rest of his crew. Unfortunately, though, there's a bunch of different things we need to do before we can even access the bridge. So it's that information is slightly misleading. That does tell us like what our next end goal is. So there's a ton of stuff we have to do before we can even think about going to the brig. So. Next, before you continue onwards, you can actually just hop down. That's all we had to do for main storyline purposes. But if you would like a piece of heart, then follow me over here. There is a pulley that is on the other side. You need to shoot the arrow orb to bring it over to you. But you do want to kill the Bokoblin archer before you jump across. Otherwise, bad things happen because it will shoot you on your way over and you have to climb the mast all over again. But once you land on the backside of the ship, there is actually a target back here on this far back mast. I'm not really sure what the point is of this pole here. It doesn't do anything. But then anyways, fall down and open the nearby chest to get a piece of heart. Now here I'm just pointing out that if you are looking at your map, um, if you have the map anyways, it'll show you where chests are, but this is how you reach this particular chest if you were trying to figure out how to do that. Now as a quick comment about this, um, if you have already completed the sand ship and you're trying to figure out how to get here, um, there is actually, you can talk with Skip Skipper after completing the sand ship and he'll let you warp here and you can come back to this location. So don't worry, if you've already completed the dungeon, there is a way to get back here and you can climb the mast just like I just showed and then get back here that way. So you can totally do it after you completed the sand ship and uh, I'm... Yeah, I'm not going to say anything else about that because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, anyways, before you leave here, there is also a goddess wall nearby. Now here I'm just recalibrating my controller to make sure I can draw well, but go ahead and use a Skyward Strike on this, and this will allow you to draw different symbols. Now, I could make fairies and stuff. I think my jars are full. Like, honestly, like I never use fairies, <laughs> honestly. But the other thing you can do, which is kind of interesting, is you can make arrows. We've actually been able to draw this shape for a long time, but it wouldn't actually do anything. I think up until now, it would actually give you recovery hearts if you tried to draw arrows early because we couldn't actually collect them. Uh, but now we can finally collect arrows if you want. 
Now, I do think it's a little bit excessive. Like, I think I'm doing pretty good on arrows, honestly. And like I keep saying, there's those uh, Boca Blin archers typically, especially like just um, to the rear of the ship up that ladder. That particular one always drops a stack of five. So if I really wanted some, I could go get some. Also, I think a lot of the barrels out here have arrows, including these ones right here. Well, maybe not. Well, regardless, there's some barrels below that have arrows in them, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Barrels? Barrels of arrows. That's like a tongue twister. Um, now, this whole dungeon is actually like over an hour, and that's just kind of long, so I'm actually going to break it up into two videos. So that's the end of this video, folks. Join me for the next one, where we will continue with the second half of the sand ship. Watch this cutscene roller. Nibbling. Rip battery. Dude, this battery is going to hang out forever, man. I'm telling you, they seriously start whining about it at like 50% battery. I don't know. I know when it gets really low, sometimes it just stops like communicating with it to pop it back in every once in a while, but it's fine. It seriously lasts forever. It's seriously like the battery whole thing is like the biggest joke about this game, honestly. Or like the biggest thing that makes no sense. Master! Master, your health is low and you need batteries. <laughs> this is the first game of the timeline. Until they add something else, so. Feed me batteries, master. Exactly. Hi, Tika. That's what they're saying. That's the quote. That's what they remember. It's the most repetitive thing. It'll be left side. We played game version. Wii version. From Pilot Princess. That's funny. I wasn't thinking about that. No, they'll quote things like, It's blue and shiny! Or whatever, I'm sure. Oh, no. Oh, finally. Oh, it died. Nine hours and 20 minutes, guys. Well... It's been a good run. <laughs> the batteries decided it. Okay, I got more right here though. You guys are pestering me to change them batteries and I was like, no, it's fine. It'll be okay. <laughs> I actually find it kind of humorous. Like, it's just, stop. My batteries are trying to run off the disc. Nine hours, 20 minutes and 48 seconds. Oh yeah, dude. But see, here's the thing. Here's the other crazy thing. I did either one or two runs of uh, this game on hero mode to practice for the marathon with this controller with the same batteries before this and it was in red then like you kidding me <laughs> and it's whining the entire time and it's like it's fine <laughs> don't worry about it are you serious yeah I know that's what I'm saying I think maybe I changed it halfway through the first run because I did a run and a half so I mean it was uh, you know, my total game time was like um, six hours and six and a half hours or something like that of my speed run. And uh, so I did it halfway through and then I, yeah, I replaced the batteries halfway through my first run. Then I got to the end and I came back and ran through again and did half the game with a new set of batteries. And then I did this whole thing, but it was still, I, must, I think I used some used batteries. I think that's what it was, but it was red the entire time. I replaced the batteries with used ones. It was already in the red whining at me. Did all that and all this, like, whatever that is, 12 hours plus of gameplay at least with dying batteries. It's fine. So I always use used batteries for my Wiimote when I can because it lasts forever. 